I'm here again. Hi guys. I went back to bed after my hot seat this morning and am feeling somewhat better. Uh, and we have an amazing live story of hope for all of you right now. Um, she will be joining us in just a second, uh, Sarah. And once I see her come on, oh, there she is. Let me just grab her. Let me see. So I have to, um, unable to join. It says unable to join. Why is that? Um, done. Okay. Sarah, um, request to join me live. I think there is a plus button at the bottom of your screen. I just want to grab you live, but it does. It says unable to join. I don't know why this happens. Um, this has been like the theme of the week. So I'm gonna let you request to join. Make sure you're not on a computer. Make sure you're on your phone. If you're on your computer, you will not be able to join. You have to do it through your phone um, for Instagram Live. So that could be the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about um, the info that you shared with us and then let you come on through your phone maybe and then request to join live, okay? Um, so Sarah, I'll let her share her story, but she um, has been working with my associate Heather, who is my NIAC acupuncture associate and has been working with me for um, close to a decade. She actually was, Heather was my assistant first um, when she went to acupuncture school. She was my assistant and then she started practicing and she started practicing in my NIAC office. And, um, and then she's also one of our online fertility coaches. So Sarah has worked with Heather since um, December of 2019. Here we go. Now, on. Ah. Here she comes. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. I was on my computer. That was it. It's, it happened yesterday, too, with somebody else. Um, okay. Instagram won't let you go live from your computer. I had a feeling when it said unable to join, I was like, wait, I saw this yesterday. <laughs> yes, I'm glad this worked. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Um, you too. Yeah. And how's everything going with the little one at home, right? You have a six-week-old? Yeah, six right? weeks. Yeah, six weeks. Um. It's good. This is the first time he's been out of the house without me, so it's um, it feels good, but it's also a little nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank yeah. you so much for taking time to come and share your story. I do think, I mean, I think all the stories are amazing and always worth sharing and very inspiring. Um, you've been through a lot, and yeah. um, thanks you, for having me. Oh my gosh, uh, so so happy. I had pulled up an original notes. You know, when Heather and I review cases, it's like she types up all your notes. So I have notes on you from when you first came to see her in December of 2019. Um, mm -hmm. And basically uh, your chief complaint was trying to get pregnant, a secondary complaint. You had endometriosis for 30 years. Yeah. You've had um, six excision surgeries, correct? Uh, seven. Yeah, seven. I just- uh, The it. last one in 20, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then let's see, I just want to like your cycles, spotting, brownish, heavy, bright red flow, um, cramping, sharp pain. So we mm -hmm. like, this is how we go through and like diagnose some like, stagnation in the uterus. Um, yeah. and, um, let's see. So we had, um, we want to just see. Yeah. So we had as of 2019, that's what it was. Six sixes in surgeries. And you did another one in 2020. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yep. Your thyroid looked good. Um, this is back in 2019. Um, you didn't feel rested upon waking. I remember this. Mm -hmm. um, you were vegan at the time. So we'll, we're going to get into that. <laughs> um, yeah. You changed some things. But you, I, I think it's a good way to share. So tell, so, so you come, you, you, you were trying, let's see, you, you explained it here too. Um, I was told by multiple doctors and reproductive endocrinologists that I had a 1% chance to have a baby or call me when you're ready for donor eggs. That's what they said yep. to you. Because at the time when you came to see us, you were 43 and a half, right? So how long had you been trying to conceive prior yeah. to starting with us? For a while, kind of on and off. Um, 
I think a lot of it too was like my own fear that like all of these things that these doctors were saying were actually true. So, you know, I was trying, but also had a lot of hesitancy just to like face that reality that although it's like, I feel like I've defied a lot of what doctors have said in the past, I still, you know, that still, you still carry it with you. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we've been trying for a while on and off for like years. Yes. But like really started after my last excision surgery in 2018. Um, and then things weren't happening. So then I that's when I decided to go see um, a reproductive endocrinologist to see like right. what and you were just trying naturally. You never went yeah. and did fertility treatments until the yeah. you had done one IVF prior to us meeting or I did or three you... before three. me too. Yeah. So like three in 2019. And so at the end of that, and third... those results, you didn't, you had said, no, you had the best results, you know, uh, after working with us, right. That yeah. you were able to freeze and all that. Um, yeah, I did two cycles after yeah. you guys. Right. Two cycles after us, um, obviously COVID hit your cycles, kept getting pushed. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell us about so you you kind of hit a wall you didn't know anyone who was going through the process you found you found me online and then yeah. went to nyack and started working with heather correct yeah yeah i found you on after the three cycles i started like really kind of doing a deep dive into some facebook groups and um had seen everyone talking about you and felt like all right i need to start making some real changes yeah um, and i saw that you worked with braverman um, and I'd had, you know, at that time, two surgeries with Vidali. Yeah. Um, so then that's when I kind of figured out, okay, where, where do I go? You know, cause I'm far away from. Yeah. You drove place. like an hour and a half to yes. see Heather in Nyack every time yeah. you came. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And so, yeah. um, tell, I want to know about the cycles that you did in okay. 2018. What were the results then? Did you get things to freeze? Um, no, I yeah. did, um two or three cycles kind of back to back in 2019. Um, and my first cycle was canceled because I wasn't responding um, about halfway through. And then we did another cycle the next month, um, which I got five eggs. I felt really good. I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I didn't think I was going to get any. And um, none of them made it to freeze. Like they arrested, um, I think, only a couple fertilized. Um, and so then we did another cycle. Um, or actually, no, I got three eggs in the, the second cycle. The third cycle, I got five eggs. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is great. Only one of them made it to blast. Um, and it tested abnormal. So then that's when I kind of was like, I need what to. What do I have to do? And then out. you, so you, you found me, you realized I was not vegan in my recommendations yes and you were like all right i'm gonna give this a shot anyway but so you yes. introduced eggs bone broth yeah and the um um the what is it the liver the uh, oh, the liver pills right, liver right, pills right. yeah yeah liver pills yeah because so and heather was like Chinese herbs. we did three months of herbs i just put oh, yeah, the formula too yeah right yeah that was very difficult because i haven't eaten meat in since i was a teenager um, so it was like, you know, trying to balance all these things, like my feelings about it, eating meat, ethical feelings and reasons. And then she was like, this is kind of non-negotiable. Like, this is like a key component. Heather said that. <laughs> Do it, um, in a very gentle, loving Heather way. Yeah, Heather is I mean, yeah. wonderful. I cannot say enough amazing yeah. things about her, but, um, I was like, okay, I got to figure this out. And so, um, I was like, all right, I'm going to get organic, you know, organic, local, like farm fresh eggs, like people that I know about. Um, so I'm going to do it in a way where like, I feel comfortable, even yeah. though this is like freaking me out, but I'm going to do it. Like I'm, I'm going all in. I've done all this so far. This is like the last thing that I need to do. And like, how can I do this in a way where I'm going to feel comfortable? Yeah. Um, so I did it. <laughs> yeah. And you were like cold hands and feet all the time. You had yeah. very low energy. Um, lots of dry skin, right? You, you know, oversharing here, but you were not pooping on a regular basis. You yeah. were like skipping every two days. I mean, we're sharing yeah. about all the things. You might as well share about your poop. Yeah. Um, 
But like to me, those are very what we'd say in Chinese medicine, blood deficiency symptoms. Like you were right. very depleted, um, easily bruising. Um, let's see. And so we saw some heat. And Heather said overall your pulse was very feeble. Um, you were open to taking herbs. I want to just go back here um, to the first page. And and then obviously, too, you had a lot of what we would call stagnation in the uterus with um, all the endometriosis. And so um, <clears throat> did you just add in those things and then kind of stay on your actual diet you didn't go and do the full like body belief or because at the time it was body belief we didn't have a quality diet out yet you didn't go and do the full body belief diet and elimination right you just added in things and then still stayed yeah i mean i took stuff out i took yes. out um yeah she sent me like a whole um packet my packet to follow yeah so i took a lot of stuff out like i took out gluten i took out soy which, you know, as a vegetarian was very hard, yeah. but yeah. made it work. Um, took out grains, limited sugar, um, no caffeine. I don't know if I said that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's in here too. I've read through these notes and I have this head cold and so I'm like not seeing things totally clearly. Um, oh, because Heather actually sent me your thing. That's where it was in here. Um, she said... So Heather also, yeah, so I need um, a lot of changes. no medical diagnosis besides endo, was officially diagnosed endo in her early 20s. Um, let's see, she did five IVF cycles, three failed. Uh, she then joined, um, so started with treatment with me. Uh, we started with supplements. You went to True Foods and bought the bone broth. Um, yeah. We love True Foods in Nyack. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Um, after starting acupuncture and dietary changes, her blood work was dramatically improved. Um, mm -hmm. I swear I saw. So anyway, so you did remove a lot of the things like the yeah. gluten and the soy and limited the sugar and the grains. And that was all since December of 2019. And then so fast forward, then COVID hits, your cycles yes. getting pushed back. Um, that must have been stressful for you. Yeah, at that point, hoping... you're 43 and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was hoping to start like, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start in, I think it was the end of February, beginning of March. So I was like, I had two months of trying to change my body and trying to like get healthier and stronger and get my eggs better. And, um, and then COVID hit and I, you know, obviously all of the, um, reproductive endocrinologists were all shut down. Um, they weren't considered essential. So super stressed. I'm like, you know, this my the clock is ticking and I'm not getting any younger. Um, and you know, they constantly tell you that at every appointment. So, um, yeah. And then I kind of, you know, I talked about it with Heather too, and I was able to change my mindset to be like, you know what, I'm going to, these extra months are just going to make me stronger and healthier and like make my body better. Um, so then I just kind of was able to change that. And that made me feel good that I knew that what I was doing was going to help. Yeah. And then when you went back in to start another cycle, tell us about your AMH and FSH, what happened? Yeah, so yes. they retested everything, like, kind of from starting over again. And, um, like, when I first started this whole process in 2019, my FSH was, like, 15. And so um, it was 7. Wow. I went retested. And, or my FSH, yeah. And then my AMH was... Um, it was like almost one, like a little below one. And it was 0.5 or 0.52 last year, the year before 2019. And I went in again and it was um, like almost one. Wow. So that was a huge, for me, that was like, I mean, a huge change. Yeah. Um, because that, you know, they constantly tell you that it's, those numbers are just going to continue to get lower and lower. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I mean, something's, this, something's working, right? Yeah. <laughs> like these are big changes. And I'm feeling better. Like I felt like eliminating a lot of those things and adding things into my diet. Like I felt like I had more energy. Um, my cycles were more regular, like not as much pain. Yeah. Um, so there were a lot of things like not only just like sort of blindly going into it, like I was actually like physically feeling those differences, which was huge. And then also, so you went and you did an, an IVF cycle at that point, right? And, mm -hmm. um, Tell us about the results there, how they were different. Yeah, so I did. Um, that was like with, March when it finally 20th. opened. Yeah, it was. Um, I started cycling at the end of May. 
end of May. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, through like the beginning of June. And um, then we froze, like I got some, I remember, I think I got like three eggs that time. So I was like, oh, yeah. it's a little you did back to back cycles. You added yeah. some HGH as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then these were by far my best cycles yet as far as number of eggs and fertilization, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. And then this one, like all of them fertilized from that, even though I only got three, like they all fertilized. So they were obviously very strong, much stronger. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was able to freeze. I froze on day three and then I did it again. I was like, all right, let's keep going. Got this momentum. We did another cycle. Um, I got seven and um, we froze and then I had to have surgery again. Yeah, you had to have, but I think this is interesting too. So you knew you had to have another surgery with the dolly because they were concerned about polyps and they yes. thought your tubes were, were blocked from the endo, right? And then yes. when he went in, what did he find? Yeah. So in 2018, I had an HSG gen. Both of my tubes were severely blocked. Not wow. any fluid going through at all. Um, 2018, yeah. severely blocked fallopian tubes. Yeah. And then fast forward, change your diet and daily castor oil packs. And then he Yeah, I was doing castor oil packs yeah. like religiously. It was doing like red light therapy, um, you know, all the food and supplements and the herbs. And um yeah, and then the, she also said I had multiple polyps do it when I did a saline sonogram. So I was like, okay, I have a bunch of polyps. I have both of my tubes are blocked. Um, I talked to Dr. Vidali. He said, well, let's let's see. We'll go in and see what's going on. Um, so Dr. Vidali and Dr. Fernandez did my surgery. And um, it turns out like only one of them, well, one of them opened, one of the, my tubes opened, which was huge. So I was like, you know, please, whatever you can do to save them. Yes. Um, and one of them, they didn't even have to do anything. It was just open. Wow. wow. Um, they tried to save the other one, but it was just like too heavily scarred from endo. And then I only had one polyp, he said. So that was very different than what, <laughs> what I was seen, going like in or they had seen yeah, years like a year before. and a half prior. Yeah. Um, and that was probably diet, acupuncture, the herbs. I mean, I had you on some pretty, you know, the formula is like kind of my classic endometriosis formula to like to break up stagnation and move things out. We did three months of those too in prep for, right? Because I think we did them, um, let's see, through COVID if I want to. Yeah, say. yeah. I started, but, I just continued. I just kept reordering. Yeah, them. we did them for three months, I want to say. Um, yeah. And and so I think all the things combined, I mean, I, I it's kind of amazing, like opening the tube that that's like mind blowing. Um, in my yeah, January, February, March, April, I think that's when we, in 2020, we did the herbs, you were on the diet, and then you went in May, mm -hmm. June for the cycles. And then I think August, he went in for the surgery, right? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then tell us the rest, then you fit you recover from the surgery. Yeah. I had surgery and then I gave my body like three months to heal and get ready for um, putting the embryos back in. So when, so in November, had that was August 20th of last year, I had another surgery. Um, and then in November 18th is when they put two of the my embryos three back day, in. three-day, 10 cell frozen embryos. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Day three, um, untested, just put them back in and yeah untested 43 year old eggs by the way guys yeah I, be I mean almost that. 44 like three yeah. weeks to 44 yeah 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 um so pretty much 44 yeah but yeah untested um and you know I, the beta was supposed to be whatever I think like 11 days later and I was like okay I can't find out like at work I need to test so of course I'm like testing at, I think day five was the first time I tested um, and there was like a faint line and I was like, okay, I can't, I'm just going to give it a couple more days. And I gave it two more days and then every day till the beta I tested and it was positive and like just un unreal. I was like, this can't, you know, this can't be true. I yeah. like kept checking it and like kept re I got like a billion tests just because I was <laughs> like, maybe I'm seeing something, you know, like maybe it's just like, I want to believe it, but all of those thoughts go through your head. Like this, you know, everyone's telling me you can't do it. Like. One percent um, chance. You were given a one yeah. percent chance. That's, yeah, that's crushing. Yeah, yeah. Of course you didn't think you could do it. One percent isn't like even ten percent. A one percent chance you were given. Yeah, um, 
And so then um, you took that baby home. <laughs> yes. And I mean, I had a great pregnancy. I continued like some of the things throughout pregnancy. Um, it was great. Like I had no morning sickness, um, felt really good and no issues, like no diabetes or um, so yeah, like cut to nine months later, August 7th. Yeah, I had um, a baby, a healthy baby boy. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And I did tests along the way, you know, like the 12 week um, yeah, chronogram and the genetic right. testing, everything came out good. Um, so yeah, I mean. <laughs> and then you yeah. still have some embryos on ice. I do, I have two still frozen. Yeah. Okay. And one tube that's working, so you never know. And one tube that's working, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is, all of it is unreal. Like the fact that, yeah, there could be a chance that I could just do this naturally and it could happen. Like that's not off the table. Um, no, I mean, especially too, like, I think for you, um, I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but my assumption is like, you've proven yourself in a way that's like, oh, okay, so I had poorer egg quality in my early 40s, or if you will, or big, right, because you started the process like 2018 or so. Um, and that you, you made better eggs, we would assume, because these ones fertilize and actually made a healthy baby. Um, and so I, I think too, you can kind of, from a mindset perspective, it's not hard to believe that you could do this again at, at 45 or 46. I mean, you already, you have those embryos too, which is a nice cushion, but it's not, I don't think it's far-fetched to believe that um, you can continue to improve things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've kept up a lot of the diet, like continued yeah. through pregnancy, Good. just because I didn't, I was afraid of any like sort of autoimmune issues. Yeah. Um, did you do any like, autoimmune protocol with the dolly when you transferred? No. No. Mm -mm. Wow. So no steroids. No. Yeah, I just had surgery with him and then yes. did my IVF protocol with um, my doctor here in New Jersey. Um. So yeah, it was just. What did your doctor say at that next IVF? Were they just floored at the results? Yeah, I mean, she although she was really supportive, like she still was like, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle. Um, I think everyone was very realistic when like talking about that. Um, so yeah, she was blown away. I mean, I think I definitely, I don't think she expected the results that she did. Um, but she also knew that I was like, you know, trying all these things, trying all these supplements, trying all this, this diet plans and, you know, who knows what she really thought about that. You know, they all are very medical and clinical as far as like, it, yeah these are the things that work and whatever else is sort of just like extra. But I mean, the results like, are I feel like speak for themselves. For me. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, what's like, what's your takeaway? Like, what would you want to share with the girls watching? It's like, I'm sure you were pretty heartbroken a couple of years ago thinking this might not happen for you. Right. And I don't know what, what are some words yeah. of wisdom you might have for others? For sure. I think, um, having for me the biggest thing was like getting support from other people because it is so isolating and mm -hmm. not many people talk about it I didn't know anybody else at the time who was going through it you know as I was talking about it more you know it's like oh this person did it or did you know this person did it um and it definitely feels less alone because it is so isolating so joining groups like for me joining online groups were huge yeah. um changing my diet you know i was vegan and vegetarian and like although i felt like i'm pretty healthy like there were so many things that i didn't realize and so many things that really helped to change it so like diet for me was huge you know it was hard yeah. but like all of it's hard you know yeah. like trying to get pregnant is hard and like going through ivf is hard so i think just being able to make those those are the things that i could control right yeah. like i can't control what the outcome is going to be but i can control control like what I put in my body, like what I'm going to do. Um, and it was all, you know, worth it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, okay. And let me see. So, uh, and so you're still sticking to the dietary changes and still feeling good with that. Right. Yeah. 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 Cause I am breastfeeding now too. And I'm worried about kind of incorporating things back into his diet. Um, so and we never had you eat meat ever. You never had to eat meat, right? I never ate meat. No. 
So it's yeah, eggs, still doing the eggs too. Liver pills. Yeah. Um, you never even ate fish. Did you eat fish? No. Mm -mm. That's amazing. Yeah. So what would be like a typical diet uh, meal or whatever, you know, day of eating for you when you or even now? You'll do a couple eggs, some bone broth. And then yeah, I veggies. definitely do. I do yeah. the eggs. Um, that has stayed. I'm not doing bone broth anymore, but the eggs okay. have stayed. Um, and um, like limiting my sugar. Um, yeah, I'm like eating quinoa. I'll do like quinoa oatmeal, also eggs, um, protein shakes. I'll do like quinoa pasta. Sweet potatoes, so many sweet potatoes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like that was like a key ingredient in what I was eating when I was trying to get pregnant. Um, and then, yeah, we had you on the supplements too, right? You did like kind of the whole supplement protocol with the cod liver oil and the- Yes. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I was doing all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, That's and amazing. that um, Renew Me. Yeah, you were doing the E3 Live, the cod liver oil. Um, a prenatal, you run a prenatal, yeah, prenatal. Right? Mm -hmm. and then the liver pills, liver pills, yeah, and vitamin D. If I know us, yes. yeah, and probiotic, probiotic, yeah, amazing. I'm trying to remember all of them, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so I love it. Well, I thank you so much for coming and sharing your story, too. It's so inspiring, and it's so amazing to see like how you were able to turn it around with, um. I mean, obviously dedication, you know, took a lot of dedication to even just drive the hour and a half to see Heather on such a regular basis for acupuncture. No donor eggs required, someone said. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will never forget that man from a very prominent New Jersey uh, place. What do you say? Call me when you're ready to do it. Literally eggs. at the end of the conversation, call me when you want to try donor eggs. And I was like, this was like right in the middle of like just desperation. Um, and I see his name posted a lot online and I'm just like, Oh God, <laughs> it's terrible. But yeah. And it's I think very finding... little like faith in, in our ability to, or just, I think, I think it, no one's looking at the data that shows clearly um, inflammation impacts all of this. And if we follow or we adjust inflammation in the body, we can, we can turn things around. Right. You know, and I also think though, for you, the other piece was the support, like finding someone or a group of people, right. You know, like who, who believed it was possible for you. Mm -hmm. And then you probably saw some stories too, where you were like, well, if she did it. I could do it. Right. I'm oh, sure. Totally. That was, yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, I think like by looking online, I'm on like the Brave Women Hoofholds group. There's a lot of people talking about you who've worked with you. And I think hearing stories from them and other like 40 groups that I'm on on Facebook, just mm -hmm. hearing stories of people having successes with you. And then just also having that support from, you know, like some of the doctors might be not be, have, not have been supportive, but like finding Heather who was just like made me feel so empowered. And she was like a cheerleader the whole way. And, you know, I'm still talking to her. I still text mm -hmm. with her. Yeah. Um, just having that, having someone in my, on my team who's like that just that was huge too yeah i agree I and agree. dr Vidali, you know but dr Vidali never told me it wasn't going to happen so yeah. i think those things have been huge yeah and he knows that you went on to get pregnant right you, you yeah i mean so i met much. him when i was 20 my first surgery with him was in 2004 so right. i was like in my 20s wow and now i'm seeing him again and i was 44 so like he's seen the whole process and i told him about it and you know, he's been amazing and supportive. Yeah, for sure. It's good to have. He sees it staff. too. Um, he said we were on a panel together and we were, and diet came up and uh, someone had asked about like vegan or vegetarianism. And it was like, he was talking and like, I'm on the stream too. And I'm just kind of like nodding. And it was really funny because he was like, I could tell Amy has something that she really needs to say. Because I was like trying to hold back. But what he said was um, when he, you know, because he's a surgeon, he's been a surgeon forever. Yeah. When he goes in on vegans or vegetarian, he, vegetarians, he says that the um, the tissue just completely just like, it's like, it's, it's so dry. It just like falls mm -hmm. apart. He was like, there's just no, like, 
no structure left to the organs. It's like they just don't have any oomph for anything like that. Um, and that like changing the diet. But he, I mean, the, yeah, he wasn't yeah. a fan of me staying vegan. <laughs> He's not at all. Yeah. Um, and I just find it fascinating that like from a surgeon's perspective, like on the inside, he can see that the organs are impacted by diet. Like that to me was just like, you know, uh, it's just mind blowing. And even, you know, Dr. Braverman, um, you know, that's what he said to me at one point when, you know, we were cross referring quite a bit, you know, I mean, he's been, he's passed what's over two years now. So it's probably like four five, six years ago, something like that. Um, and he said to me, you know, I make dietary recommendations and I, and I tell women, you know, to eat like a Mediterranean diet. He's like, but yes. whatever diet you're doing, like I've just never seen inflammation change as quickly because that's what they're testing for. They're testing for these inflammatory markers in women. Um, and they were such big proponents too. And even like Vidali recently, he just like did a, did a surgery on one of my patients and he was like, it was like different inside there. He's like, the diet must have changed things because it was different wow. from when we last, like what we last looked at. Like it's almost similar to you of like, what they saw in the saline sano and that both your tubes were blocked and then to go in a year later and it's like one tube is open and only one polyp instead of several. It's like, that's stuff that's fascinating to me yes. like, that we have that much power between, I mean, I do think with you, like you did all of it. You did the acupuncture, the casserole packs, like obviously the, the coaching with Heather and the, the support there, the herbs, the diet, you know, you did all the things, but um, you came out on top. Look at that. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, honor. Thank honored. you for you and your team. Like yes. Heather, just, I obviously can't say enough good things. About yeah, her. no, she's, uh, she's gold. She's pure gold. Um, she's like a sister to me, uh, which I know, you know, I mean, most people know that, but yeah, we're like sisters. Uh, mm. She's amazing. And yeah, I feel so lucky to have her on my team and, and she's coaching with us now. And now she has space in her life to do that too. And um, yeah, she's always been so inspired Great. by the work too. It's amazing. But you know, mm -hmm. and just like with you, like every, every client, like I have a case review, she writes it up, we go over it, like I'm yeah. in the loop. And, um, but we do joke that she is the closest thing that I have to a clone and can basically like, she knows what I would say. And Sarah, my other yeah. associate and coach, who's in my New York City practice, it's the same. We've both been together. I've been with both of them for over 10 years, each of them. And mm. so they're amazing. You know, they were with me when I was like writing the books, you know what I mean? And discovering things. And so, um, yeah, it's an amazing team. I agree. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing yeah. this story. So helpful. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. And enjoy new mama hood. I and will. Keep us posted, you know. When you're doing this again i feel like you will <laughs> i will i will I, for sure i'll be in touch with heather <laughs> yeah that sounds good okay thank right, you so Sarah, much thank you so much um i'll let you x out and then i'm just going to answer some questions in here okay too. awesome okay thank you oh what a great story um i see so many of you are on here it's super inspiring so i know there were some questions of like yeah how to coach with us or work with us um just so you do know, the protocol that Sarah followed is completely outlined in my Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course, which is open for enrollment right now. You can also work with Heather, who Sarah worked with. She is one of my online coaches. If you do the um, PLUS program, the master for the Yes, You Can Get e course enrollment, the master level is working with me that it's officially sold out, which... Um, is what it is. I only have a certain amount of spots. It's sold out, but we still have plenty of plus level spots. And um, you can work with Heather or Sarah. Both of my coaches are amazing. And yeah, so the whole protocol is mapped out there. It's um, amyralp.com slash yes is where you can go and find information. And um, I want to see a hands up um, if everybody could start commenting on who is still all here. And so I want to give away a scholarship to the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course. So if you're interested in winning the scholarship to the e-course, um, start commenting right now. Um, there we go. Let's see some comments. How many people do you cap the group at? Um, well, for the basic level, there's no cap because um, it's an online community where I go live every single week and answer questions. And that online community can have hundreds of people that's fine 
Um, we cap my master level because there's only one of me and we cap the pluses because we only have two coaches as of right now. I'm sure we will have more soon. Um, but the basic level, we don't have to cap. Let's see, here we go. Everybody's commenting. Um, uh, let's see. You guys are cute. Um, my question is, instead of try, trying IVF, an endo repro provider can be a good option. I don't know what that means, my love. Um, how many people do you cap the group at? Yeah, so uh, let's see. <clears throat> so 27 and 72 are like really special numbers to me. So I'm going to pick Lao Lao 2727 as the winner of the scholarship. Um, it's totally spontaneous. And if you didn't win the scholarship, please don't be too upset. Um, <laughs> Uh, so Lao Lao 2727, just message us on the DM us on, in, on the back. I always say the back end. DM us and we will get you the information um, on how to join the course. Okay. And the rest of you, um, check out amyrop.com slash yes. That is the e-course and read about it. Check it out. There are payment plans, enrollment closes on Monday. We only open up this course once a year. It is um, 12 and a half hours, 13 hours of me teaching. Basically every single thing I know about fertility from mental, emotional health to physical, nutritional supplements, lifestyle. Um, I'm going to be teaching a 75 minute uh, classes 10 weeks in a row starting next Thursday. They're all recorded. You don't have to be on there live because I am not taking questions while I teach. The questions will all be answered and asked in our private community, which is not on Facebook. We have moved it recently to Mighty Networks. You, With the course, you get the private online community. You get teaching from me. You get a ton of bonuses, um, lots of opportunity, uh, lots, lots, lots of stuff. And you, you basically get to pick my brain, which is um, 20 years of experience. And I'd like to add, too, that the, the teaching ends after those 10 sessions, but you have the recordings and the meditations and all the PDFs and, you know, all of the bonuses forever. And that we never close the group. You never get kicked out of the group. So we have women in that group um, who've gone on to have their children and maybe are trying for baby number two and they're still part of the community. And every time I up, update the uh, the teachings for the e-course, they get access to it. So you never get kicked out. That's, that's a big part for me. I know a lot of the programs online close. They, they teach and then they close and then the group goes away. That is never how I handle it. And once you are pregnant, we move you to my new mama group where you can then um, mingle with new moms or, or newly pregnant women. And I still come live and do Q and A's there as well. Um, you guys are so sweet. Glad you were feeling better. I know. Don't I seem so much better? I hung up from that 1030 and I went and I slept. I sweated. Like I, I if someone, I feel like I, I've dropped 10 pounds in sweat in the last um, 24 hours. I cannot believe how much sweat is coming out of me. I feel so much better right now. It's kind of, I'm not going to I'm not going um, but thank you. So yeah, IVF exo sama taki. I'm just that's what I'm gonna call you. You're gonna make sure when we're in the group, you're gonna have to tell me that that you're who you are. Um, you won the scholarship yesterday. What day does it close? So the the program enrollment closes on Monday. Um, today's Friday, right? So you have a couple more days. So head over to amyrop.com slash yes, read all about the program. There's a ton of testimonials in there. There's a video, there's all the modules are broken down, everything you're going to learn, all the bonuses. Uh, you get so much for this program from this program. Um, thank you for doing this and for all of us. Oh, well, I love you guys so much. Uh, all right. So Lao Lao 27, you're jumping up and down. Yay. Well, good. Today was your lucky day to win something. Um, and so for all of you that you now know, my one of my favorite numbers is 72. And also, I didn't say it while Sarah was on, but... Um, the reason one of my favorite numbers is 72 is one of my best friends, when I was in high school, uh, sadly passed away and his football jersey was number 72. And he died um, on August 6th, but technically August 7th, because it was like midnight. Um, anyway, and then she said she gave birth on August 7th. And I always take that as a sign that like, that was my, my Joshie speaking to me. And then Lao Lao 2727, you know, anyway. 
There you go. That's how it all went down for me in my brain. Um, okay, guys, I love you. I'm going to go probably rest a little bit more. And I'll see you later. So check out the program, amyrop.com slash yes. And I'm going to be going live a lot in the next few days, more hot seats, more scholarships, more giveaways. So tune in live and you have a really good opportunity at winning um, free entry into the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant course. Love you guys. It's an honor to give these things away. So fun.